Well, good morning, everybody. And while people are popping in and joining us, um, I'm going to just let everybody know that this is an OpenShift Commons briefing, and I'm really pleased um, at the number of participants that are jumping in and joining us this morning. So it's a, a, a tribute to Veer's popularity and uh, as well as to his expertise. And so Veer Mukchandi is our He's a platform architect and an evangelist for us at Red Hat, but he's also much, much more. He's done lots of work on client deployments and helping customers and folks get um, all the efficiencies they can out of OpenShift. And um, today, he's going to talk to us a little bit about implementing blue, green, and AB deployments, um, which I think is near and dear to a lot of our hearts. So I'm going to let um, Veer introduce himself um, and give us a little bit about his background and then just kick this off, and we're going to talk for about a half an hour, and then um, we'll do some Q&A. If you want to enter questions and answers through the chat, please do so. I'll, I'll read them off, um, and then we can have a conversation afterwards about um, whatever you, whatever feedback you want to give him or any other questions you want to ask here. because we've got him for a full hour. So take it away, Veer. Thanks. Thanks, Diane. Hello, everyone. My name is uh, Veer Muchandi. I'm a a platform as a service architect or an evangelist. Uh, I am also called a middleware specialist. My job is to work with uh, um, our potential Red Hat customers who are interested in platform as a service, OpenShift, right? And then help them uh, help them ad adopt OpenShift in their enterprises. So I, I go in, in stages where um, OpenShift is, uh, is new for them. They are uh, trying it out, getting their hands wet. I, I I help them set up OpenShift in their enterprises and then coach them on how to use OpenShift kind of things, right? So in that process, I also come across a lot of situations where uh, I am, from Red Hat's perspective, right? I, I come to know about what customer situations are on, or what they're asking for or what the expectations from PaaS are firsthand. So that's, this is a good part of my job that I, I am exposed to what uh, customers are wanting uh, from a tool like OpenShift, right? So that's that's about me. Um, so the topic for today is uh, uh, blue, green, and AB deployments. So uh, w what are these and where are they coming from? Uh, let, let's talk a little bit about that before we get into uh, how to do this, right? Now, <laughs> blue, green, uh, the, uh, when, when it comes to deployments using OpenShift, application deployments using OpenShift, one of the questions that comes up from uh, the customers whom I meet is, how do I uh, achieve efficiencies in terms of uh, deploying newer versions of applications? We are, we are, my, my team is always changing applications, right? And as the applications change, they, uh, they have their handover from development to QA, QA to production, right? When it comes to especially to production, uh, the operations teams are in traditionally, they have been like working over the weekends or uh, taking some time in the nights where the application can be taken down and a newer version has to be deployed. And that's, that's painful as well as time consuming. And if things fail, then they have to roll back. All these issues would be there, right? So how do we reduce the uh, the downtime of applications, number one, or how do we probably achieve zero downtime deployments, right? And that's the kind of question comes up. And there are patents that have come up in the industry in the past few years, uh, and uh, which enable this minimal downtime or sometimes zero downtime deployments. And uh, these are those patents, the blue green deployments and AB deployments are are kind of those patents. They are more or less the same, but there are some minor tweaks, minor differences. So we are going to discuss what these patterns are and how OpenShift enables these patterns with, with the kind of flexible architecture OpenShift has, how those patterns can be achieved using OpenShift. Or I, I do have a couple of applications that are already deployed for these patterns. I pre-deployed them in, in, for the sake of time because this is just a half hour and if I try to build and deploy during this call, it's going to take a lot of time. So I, I have these examples ready and I'll show you how to, how to achieve these patterns, but let's talk about what these patterns are. Okay. 
first we'll address uh, blue green deployments so in case of blue green right what does blue and green represent blue is the version of application that is running right now let's say it is version one of your application right it's think of it as blue color blue is version one and let's say blue has some problems and green is version two which is with the, which is with the changes so the newer version of application let's think about it as green right so you want to move from blue to green so if you look at how the blue version of application is running today you have the app running and there could be one or more than one instances of app which is of blue version right so in in terms of openshift i'm i'm making an assumption here that people who are on this call have know a little bit about uh, OpenShift already. They know what the, what a pod is, what a service is, and all that. So I don't want to explain all those things at this point. I'm just directly jumping into uh, how to do blue green without assuming uh, by, by assuming that you know all the uh, basic stuff about OpenShift, right? So let's say if you have multiple instances of your application running, you may have multiple pods which are the running instance of your application, right? So and all these parts or all these instances of your application are front-ended by a router. And the router is the one that is load balancing and distributing the traffic across all these instances of your app, right? So there, there is a blue version of app running. And when your client, which is probably a browser, right, is hitting your application's URL, then it gets resolved to the router and from router the router will take it to the blue version of application on one of those parts that is running right now when you want to introduce a new version of application which is the green version right how do we make a quick switch from blue to green without incurring a lot of downtime right so in in that case what you would do is rather than tearing down the blue version of application in case of OpenShift, since applications run as parts, you can spin up a new app, right? Perhaps within the same project, spin up a new app with the green version of application. That means a green pod gets spun up. So now blue, both blue and green are running. You can also test your green app in advance and make sure it is running. And after that, you can disconnect the route from the router to the blue version of application and at the same time enable the route to the green version of application i'll show you exactly how it is done right now what happens in case where your green version is bad you can since your blue version is already running you can quickly switch over or roll back to the older version if you have to right that's blue green how how do we switch instantly between the blue version and green version now, having said this, let me quickly switch over to the demo. As I said, I have a pre-deployed application. Let me pull it up. So what you will see here, um, I, I have a project with name Blue Green Demo, right? And in this project, I have two applications running or two different versions of applications running, right? I have a blue application right and this is running with just one part here and there is a green application that's running with another part and both these applications have their they are all if you know openshift every part you cannot talk to part directly there is a service front ending the part so blue application has a blue service and green application has a green service front ending it right now also, you'll see a difference here that there is a URL for this application, right? And this URL is associated with blue right now, which means that your route is pointing to the blue version of application. So let's see what it looks like. So it's showing a blue rose, right? Now, let's say we want to switch over from this, this route from the blue version to green version. Let's see how easy it is to do this. I'll bring up, let me switch over to the project first. So I'm getting into the blue green project. If I look at 
the routes, I have this route, which is this URL, right? And this route is pointing to the service blue, this service. Now, all I have to do is edit this route. Its name is blue green. And get down here. You'll see that the host name is the URL and it is pointing to the service with name blue. I'll change this to green. Right? This is the green service. And I'll just save this file. Instantly, you have seen that this URL now moved from blue to green, right? Now let's go back and see what happened to the application itself. There's a green rose, right? So that's a quick switchover of app from blue to green. So when you want the, the newer version of application to be deployed, all you have to do is just switch over. So this can be done at any point of time. You don't have to be in the night to do it, right? So think of the amount of ease with which operations can handle this kind of a task, right? That's, that's the advantage of blue green. Now, there is another pattern. Now I'll move this away and uh, we'll go to the next kind of deployment pattern. There is another pattern uh, that that keeps getting discussed, which is uh, the AB deployments pattern. Now, uh, one more thing I forgot to talk about. If if you wanted to switch from green to blue again, you would make the same exact change, like. Uh, If something was wrong with the blue green version and if I wanted to change to blue, all I do is this change and then my app gets back to the older version. Right now, the next pattern is um, AB deployments. And AB deployments is more, although it is very similar to blue green, this is a, a little different model in the sense that. Uh, the a lot of people ask like I I have a new version, but I want to I don't want to switch over completely to the from the older version to newer version. I want to test it out slowly and 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 uh, and slowly move my deployments from uh, from from the old version to new version, right? Now by default, let's say you have. Uh, n number of pods of your application running in 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 production let's say you have uh, you have your app and in in this case since we are calling ab let's call the first version as app a now your app version a has let's say 100 pods or 100 instances running right if you are doing a deployment with openshift by default openshift does a rolling deployment which means that each part will be taken down when you do uh, when you change the version from a version to b version a part is taken down and the new part is put in its place and it it repeats for for all 100 you can also change it to update by certain percentage which means you can say that i have 100 parts i want to take down or change 10% at a time which means 10 parts are taken out they are replaced by newer version of your application like means out of 100 10 will be new 90 will be old and then it keeps repeating that until it reaches 100 right that that can be that, that's that functionality is there automatically like you have you have the rolling deployments configured automatically when you try to do deployments with openshift right you can change the strategy all uh, at any point of time but it, it's configured by default but some of the customers ask for yeah, you will do aut automatic rolling deployments, but I don't want it that way. I want that to be controlled. I want, like, uh, you. I have ten instances of instances of my app running, ten parts running, but I want to decide when I want to increase the number of instances of app B, which is the new version, and uh, reduce the number of instances of app A, the old version. So they want to have a complete control on 
increasing the number of instances and reducing the number of instances. Let's let's look at what what it looks like, right? You have the same model. You have a router. Your client is reaching the router by using a URL, and uh, there are n number of instances of your app version one running, right? That which is app A. Now, let's say you had a change. You made a change. It's tested, and then it's it's being driven into production as a deployment, right? You spin up a new part of version two, which is app B, right? Now, uh, you don't have to take down the version one. You just introduce one instance of app B, and you have four instances of app A in this case, right? And then if you are, some of the load is getting directed to app B, while the rest of the role is going to app A. So both the versions of application are running at the same time. Right? And then as you go along, if you are happy with the performance of app B, you start increasing the number of instances of app B and reduce the number of instances of app A. Right? And this continues until the app A version is completely taken off. The, the, you, you don't run any instances of app A you only ins run instances of app B, right? So this kind of a model where you gradually shift your workload from app A to app B is called AB deployments. Now, how do we achieve this using OpenShift? In OpenShift, again, we have the route, right? And uh, we we have we define a service that frontends the parts, right? In this case, what we would do is for we define a label for the application, like for example, you can call this label anything, but let's say we we, we say all these parts are AB members, AB deployment members, right? So I set a flag called AB member equal to true, and it applies to all the parts here. And then I also define a service that that front ends any parts that have this label called AB member equal to true, right? Which means whether it is the blue application or green or red or whatever it is, right? Any part that has AB member equal to true will be front ended by this service. Now, my route is defined in front of this service. So when I hit myapp.mydomain.com, it goes to the router and it it is since this route is front-ending this particular service, the the router will load balance across any parts with this particular label. Right? Now, as we move along, we add app B with the same label. So now the route, the 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 load that is coming in gets distributed across blue as well as green at the same time. Right? This is what we uh, this, this is what we do in order to achieve the AB process. And then over a period of time, the blues will go away and, and or A application A will go away and uh, application B will remain, right? Now let's see, going back to the example, right? I have another, let me close this. I have another pre-deployed pre application and my project, I call it AB demo. And if you see here, <clears throat> I have an app A, and there are six parts of app A running here. And I also have an app B, and there are currently there are no parts for this. And both app A and app B are fronted by a service. This service is not relevant because we are not going to use it. However, there are six parts here for app A and there are zero parts for app B right now. You'll also see that there is a service AB, which is the same as what I was showing here. And this has this AB member equal to true kind of a label set, which means that any parts with that label will be, will be front-ended by this service. And in turn, this route is, is going to load balance across all this, right? Now let's uh, to pull up and show. Oh, 
what I'll do now is um, you see this URL if I what is getting displayed here it just says I am version one and my pod IP is so and so right now let's see and you'll see that there are six pods running and all these six pods belong to app a and just have a look at these IP addresses right these these are IP addresses of each of these parts. Now let me run a loop here. The reason I am doing it from command line is because um, oops, is because if I do it from the browser, there will be enough there will be session affinity to a particular part. So every request will end up going to the same part. So that's the reason why I'm doing it from command line. If I run, run this for loop and call this URL, it's going to say the same thing. I am version one, but look at the pod IPs here: 162, 63, 226, 227, 247, 246, and then again 162, 163. Right? So the the six of them are round robin, and then they repeat again. And those are the six of these, right? And these all these six are version one, which is app A. Now what we'll do is we'll scale up app B and we'll scale down app A. So so I'm scaling app B down uh, up and I'm right now there are zero I'm making it one and I am reducing the number of instances of app A to five. Once I make this change, let's come and have a look at it. It's creating a new version of app B. We'll see that there were zero here and now it's spinning up a new pod, it's already done. And also the number of pods of app A have been reduced from six to five, right? Now, under this service AB, now you'll see that there were one, two, three, four, five pods of app A and one pod of app B got added here because this guy is servicing both app A and app B at the same time. Now let's have a look at uh, what our loop does for us. You see that there are five parts of app a and there is one of app B. So five of them are five of the re uh, requests are coming back with version one and one of them is coming back with version two. So you just introduced version two of the application just with one part and that's being hit and then it's round robin, right? Now let's go further and make them equal, right? So three of app A and three of app B. Now you'll see that app B is scaling up and app A has already scaled down. Let's wait for it to come up. Yeah, all the three are up, right? Now let's go back and check what the results are. Oops. Now the load is distributed, right? Between one and two. Now let's say I completely, oops. Scale down, scale up app B to six and scale down app A to zero. So app A is completely gone now. We are happy with app B, so all six are app B. So now everything is version two. So this is how the gradual increase of your newer version of application and gradual reduction of the older version of application can be done. Now, remember that there are two versions of applications available at any point of time. If I'm not happy with, uh, if, with the newer version for any reason, I can always scale back 
the old version to zero and switch over to the uh, uh, new version to zero and switch over to the old version. Right. So that's that's the power of being able to do things on time. That that's what that was about uh, the AB. So I'm done with what I wanted to show. Now I'm ready for questions. Um, so there are a couple of questions have come in, Veer, and, and thanks for that. It was it was pretty pretty good enlightening for me. Um, in in the blue green, what happens um, when someone's got an already open connection and you disconnect to to the um, to the blue? What happens to that connection? Does it keep is it complete uh, if someone's running? So there is a uh, yes, there is a setting that you can do in terms of uh, uh, when, when, when you are scaling down your pods, right? Or when you are trying to shut down your pod, there is some responsibility from the application developer side on how they take the termination signal. So OpenShift will send a termination signal and uh, your app, once it receives the termination signal, can say that I don't want to accept any more new connections from now on, but I'll service my existing connections and complete it before moving on to the, uh, uh, before shutting down. If the app can be coded like that, then, then there will be graceful termination of, the, uh, of that part. It's the, the, all OpenShift is doing is sending a termination signal to your part, which in turn ends up on the app. So the app should respond to that in order to achieve that effect of a graceful termination. Okay. Um, and yes, this session is being recorded, Palmer. Um, that's one of the questions that just popped. Can you show where you set the labels and selector in the AB and the app AB service? Sure. Uh, if I run OC get service, there are three services. One is for just app A alone, and the other is for app B alone, and the third is app AB. I created a new service and I set the selector as AB group member equal to true. Let me open this and show. See the selector here, I set it as app uh, AB group member equal to true. Now, how did I do that? Uh, let me. It was um, by when I created both two versions of applications using a template, for example, this app A service was created and app B service was created. But this app A B service, I had to create myself. So I used this command to create the service. So I said expose DC app A, for example, that at the time only app A was there and name, I gave it as app AB, and I said, use this selector. So this is the key here. So I'm defining a new service, generator equal to service, right? I'm defining a new service, and I'm defining that service with this selector, right? And then it, it created this additional service for me. Cool. Any other questions? Uh, Mateus um, has a question. I'm going to let him unmute himself and ask directly. If he can figure out how to unmute himself. Nope, not quite yet. He's figuring out. He's muted himself. Can you talk a little bit more about session affinity? I, I think that was something you, you glossed over pretty quick. Um, not doing it in the console versus doing it in the um, terminal. And what's happening with that? So if I, um, for example, if I, 
Let me, I refresh it, right? And now it is like 3.252. If I continue to refresh my screen, I'm still hitting the 3.252. It's not going to a different part. That's due to session, session affinity configured in the router. If I if the request is coming from the same client, it's getting directed to the same pod due to the session affinity. And that's the reason why I had to do it from uh, as a curl from the command line so that I can see the list of uh, pods that I, I can show the round robin stuff. It, it's hard to do it from the browser because I have to completely clear the cache and do it again if I have to uh, uh, show a different pod here. But def by default, the session affinity is already there. And that's the reason why you are always hitting the same pod. Okay. So I think Matthias may have. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hello. Thank you. Hi. Go ahead. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, first of all, it's uh, an honor to be here watching this uh, work in technology get in shape. Uh, we, uh, we have uh, here in the report from the Zoom, we have a couple of, of customers that uh, often they do a deploy that breaks everything. And I guess the uh, blue, green, blue green deployment isn't uh, the best way for them to, to roll. So, what your, is your recommendation, recommendation when the, the new deployment would, uh, let's say, uh, break some compatibility or or mess with the database. Uh, what was the best way to go through when chains will break? So there, there was echo, so I could not hear it clearly. But let me um, let me reiterate what I understood. Um, what is the recommended approach when there are application dependencies on? Uh, on let's say the data with the backend database is is that is that the question it's close i, I think what he's okay. what matthias is concerned with and i apologize for the echo if you're getting it too um is that if you have a a customer who um deploying in blue green when you that it breaks this it breaks the application and maybe a database dependency or something else but it's What's the best, you know, yeah, what he's asking is what's the best way to go when a new deploy breaks the current deploy? Must be some so, interdependent interdependency between the applications. So the the when you are doing blue green, uh, the, the first type that we discussed about, right? You have the blue version that is uh, currently running, let's say, and when you are introducing the green version, it's it's a flip between blue and green at, at at one instance, right? So either the blue is active or green is active, not not both at the same time. Now in such a case, if the blue was running okay and it was it was fine, you have uh, and as long as the blue is running, you have you can take your own time to test the green version as as long as you want before doing the flip over, right? So now. In spite of like after the uh, uh, deployment of the blue, uh, af after switching over to the green version, if you don't like it, you can always switch back to blue. Um, I didn't understand the uh, one version affecting the other version. That that part I didn't understand. Maybe perhaps you are saying that uh, uh, once I switch over to the green version, if if that green version involves some changes to the database. And I have to switch over to the blue version that didn't have those database changes, right? Is is that is that the kind of question? Yes, I think so. Okay. If that is the case, I mean, this which pattern that you would apply uh, depends on what the change is. Can I can I do a blue green in case where there is a database change? Is something that you have to think through and then apply. So if if you are when you are moving from blue to green, if there is, you can you can still move from blue to green by using this pattern. But the being able to roll back from green to blue will depend on what kind of change you made. So you need to tell your operations in advance on uh, 
this kind of a change you cannot flip back because of uh, because of the kind of change it is because the the database is completely different and if i try to switch back there are dependencies that will not allow me to do it so better trust that application fully before um, be before you switch over kind of thing so uh, the 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 rollback is still possible by using the procedures that you already use if but uh, the ability of this this kind of pattern only goes only up to a certain extent you cannot it's not a, these are not silver bullets that apply in every situations i mean you you have to decide on what works and what doesn't for your particular situation yeah so mateus is saying that blue green is is like an atomic switch um, you have to go all the way there's one other question uh, there's a couple other questions that are coming in the in the chat and Peter is asking um, or saying, in the situation where the app is stateful, he's still missing how OpenShift determines there are no more sessions on A and now A can be stopped. He's a little. Right, so the, as I said before, right, the, the OpenShift will send a termination signal to a par when you are asking it to shut the pod down. And the termination signal is can be listened to by the application. Now, if you want a graceful termination, your application should not accept any new connections, but service the or the existing connections before it uh, it shuts down. So there is it's it's not a complete open shifts uh, um, responsibility. It's like open shift will enable you to like there is a termination signal and there is a kill signal and there is a gap in between those two and you can i believe you can configure that but between this time before the kill comes in there is a chance for your application to gracefully shut down so i i think i have to um, uh, probably go back and research more on that topic and uh, probably come out with an example at some point of time in the future but that, yeah, uh, I don't have a example as an answer to that question, but we need to that's, work on it more to come back with an example for the future. That, that, I think that'll be another little video blog post shortly. I can, I can see that one coming, the di distinction between termination and kill. Yeah. Uh, how to handle that gracefully. Randy is asking, what exactly needs to be done to an application to enable the servicing of existing systems but not allow new, ses new sessions? Are you suggesting that applications should now completely control session management? Um, and I think this is more to the same topic. Yeah, it's the same topic. Yeah. I think I'll, I'll, I'll get into more details and probably uh, uh, answer this question as a blog post or, yes. uh, or something like that. Yeah. yeah. So I think that's, that's definitely a topic for the next one. Um, yeah, and that people are going back and forth, giving each other suggestions now um, on how to do this gracefully. But some, some of the burden here is on the application to be um, built gracefully so that it shuts down gracefully. I think that's, that's pretty clear to everyone in the chat as well. Um, it would be nice if we could do everything on OpenShift for everyone, but um, there's a little bit that you have to architect into your applications as well. I'm looking, and there we go. Are there any other questions um, at the moment that people have or anything else that you'd like to add, Veer? Uh, no, I'm, I'm done with what I wanted to say, um, but yeah. thanks, for, thanks for attending though, yeah. I, mm -hmm. Thank you all for, for doing it, all for joining us today. I'm really pleased to have, have gotten this topic aired. Um, and you'll, uh, well, Mateus is asking one more question. Um, and I'm not sure Veer knows the answer to this one, but will we see this on the web console? Um, uh, see, um, uh, see, see what? Uh, you could clarify that, yeah. Uh, maybe, maybe it has, I have to read the other things before that question to understand yeah. what. The AB deployment, blue-green deployments or something, or, you know, adding this kind of feature um, set uh, onto the console, web console itself. 
like a button or something to A B deploy my app. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, think, um, I I don't know that answer to that question. I'll have to check with the the, uh, the powers that you on the road. Yeah. Yeah. The, the roadmap board. and the Trello board. I haven't seen that um, request come in, but um, there you go. So there's a couple of things. The link will be on for this recording will be on the briefings page on the commons.openshift.org site. Um, it should be up probably tomorrow sometime. Um, and you can also, if you've logged in through Blue Jeans, you can log back in the same way and you'll be able to see the video as soon as I it gets compiled um, and reposted back up to Blue Jeans today. But if you look back tomorrow, it will be on the briefings page. So there you go. Um, thank you again, Veer. Um, I'm sure we'll have you back again soon. Uh, always informative. And thank you everybody for joining us today. Thank you, Diane. Thanks, everyone.